Please stand. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let me read again the parable that Jesus told, which has come to be known as the parable of the rich fool. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? These are the words of our text. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters through faith in Christ, it is my premise that this story that Jesus told is simply outrageous. This is an outrageous story. Maybe you don't think so. Maybe you've heard it a number of different times and it's just like other parables of Jesus and uh, you don't think it's that outrageous but I'd like to try to convince you of how outrageous it is and I'd like to convince you by trying to imagine a conversation that you might have with a friend about this parable a conversation that you might have with a friend who who doesn't believe or maybe doesn't go to church or isn't really into that whole religion and Bible stuff let's just imagine what that conversation might look like shall we So what was the sermon about at your church this week? Well, we're doing this series on parables, stories that Jesus told, and, and this particular story was about how God killed a man. Um, well, actually, what God said to the man is that that very night his soul was going to be demanded from him, which means that God was going to kill the man. Okay, a story about God killing a man, demanding his life from him. What did this guy do? I mean, what crime did he commit? What atrocity did he visit upon his fellow human beings? What mass amounts of criminal activity was he involved in that God decided the punishment was so severe that he had to kill him? What did he do? Well, he, uh, he struck it rich. Um, and then retired early. Okay, and God killed him for that. Okay, well, I assume he struck it rich by, by stealing, by taking the money from someone else, or, or he struck it rich by, like, selling crack cocaine or something, or, or he struck it rich by oppressing his workers and not giving them a living wage or, you know, dental benefits or something. What possibly... What possibly could be the justification for God killing a man just because he struck it rich and retired early? Yeah, the irony is that it was actually God who allowed this guy to strike it rich because this man was a farmer and obviously God produced the conditions for this man to have his best crop ever. The guy was a farmer? Yeah, he was a farmer and he had his best crop ever and so he decided to, you know, tear down his barns and build bigger ones for all his crops and all his stuff and then, you know, because he was rich and he was doing well, he just decided he was going to relax a little bit and enjoy some of what he had. He was going to take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. And your God killed him? For that? Yeah. Yeah, that's the story. God demanded his life from him. He killed him. And actually, before he killed him, he taunted him a little bit. He what? Yeah, he taunted the man a little bit. He told him that he was going to demand his life from him. He told him that he was going to kill him that night. But before he did that... Um, well, he kind of taunted him, and he said, yeah, now who's going to get your stuff? So let me get this straight. Jesus tells a story about a farmer 
who has a good crop and does what any farmer who might do who has a good crop. He tears down his small barns that don't hold his stuff and his grain and he builds bigger ones and then he decides, well, I got everything that I need. I might as well relax and enjoy life a little bit. And this is the story then. God killed the man for doing that. Yep, that's the story. Then the preacher talked about another event in the Gospels. This one wasn't a parable. This was just something that happened to Jesus as part of his ministry. You see, uh, um, this young man came to Jesus and asked Jesus the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Did God kill the guy? No, didn't kill that guy. Um, so Jesus, you know, Jesus uh, starts to tell the young man what he needs to do if he wants to earn his way into heaven. That's what the young man really wanted to do. He wanted to find out sort of what the bare minimum was of getting into heaven, sort of what he had to do to get into heaven. And so Jesus tells him, well, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness against your neighbor. And then he said, honor your father and your mother and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, that seems a little bit more reasonable, I guess. Basically, so Jesus was telling this young man that if he wanted to get into in heaven and inherit eternal life, that he should obey the commandments. Yeah, that's what Jesus was saying, but the, the young man wasn't quite satisfied, and so the young man said, well, what else do I got to do? Because the young man said, you know, I've done all that stuff since I was a boy. And Jesus said, okay, if you want to be perfect, go sell all your possessions, give the money to the poor, and then come follow me. Are you kidding me? The guy followed the commandments. So Jesus is going to tell him that he's got to sell everything he has, give all the money to the poor, and then live some life like a gypsy following Jesus. That's what Jesus told the man he had to do. Yeah, I mean, except for the gypsy part. That's, uh, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, go sell everything you have and give the money to the poor and then come follow me. Well, did he do it? No, he didn't do it. He walked away kind of sad because he was, he was really wealthy. So let me get this straight. At this church of yours, reading from this Bible of yours, with this Jesus of yours, first you talked about a story where God kills a man for no other reason than that he strikes it rich with a good crop, which, by the way, God gave him. That's what you people believe, right? So this guy gets a great crop. He tears down his bonds. He builds bigger ones to put all his grain in and his stuff, and he just wants to relax. I mean, this is the American dream. The guy struck it rich. He just wanted to enjoy a little bit of the fruit of his labor. He just wanted to have some nice food, some nice drinks, and relax and take it easy and retire early. And your God killed him for that. And by the way, your God taunted him about who was going to get his stuff before he killed him. And then you tell me this story about Jesus, and this guy actually wants to follow Jesus. He actually wants to find out what it is that he's got to do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus places this massive burden on him, says not only you got to follow all the commandments, but if you really want to earn your way into heaven, you got to sell all your stuff, every last bit of it, give all the money to the poor, and then just come follow Jesus. That's outrageous. Yeah, it is. Outrageous, I suppose. But, you know, that's what the text was and that's what the sermon was about. This story is outrageous. And if you listen to this story and you don't recognize how outrageous it is, you either don't 
fear God or you weren't listening very well. That man broke no laws. He did probably what any one of us would have done in the same situation. He decided that he was going to parlay his good fortune into a good life of enjoyment and relaxation and pleasure. And God not only killed him for it that very night, but then taunted him with the words, then who's going to get all your goods that you have stored up for yourselves? This story is outrageous. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now Luke tells us at the beginning of chapter 12, Luke tells us that, that there was a crowd of thousands of people there. There was a crowd of thousands of people listening to Jesus, and the reason that Jesus told this story is because someone in the crowd shouted out to him, Hey, Jesus, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus said, Who made me judge or arbiter between you? But then Jesus said, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, because a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And then Jesus told this story. And by the way, after the story... After God kills the guy in the story, Jesus says, and so it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich toward God. <sighs> Scary stuff. But then in Luke chapter 12, then the context changes a little because now Jesus is no longer speaking to the crowd of thousands. Now Jesus turns to his small group of disciples for a little debriefing on the topic. And listen to one of the things that Jesus says in the verses following this parable. In verse 31 of chapter 12, Jesus says, But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. You see, for Jesus, this is a priority issue. Seek his kingdom and all these things, which is the food and the drink and the clothing that the pagans run after. Seek his kingdom and God will give you all the rest of this stuff. But I don't know about you, when God tells me to seek his kingdom, what does that mean? And what does it mean to be rich toward God? And am I doing that? Am I really seeking his kingdom? Am I really being rich toward God? I mean, if you took a look at my checkbook and my life and how I spend my time, would you really be able to see that I'm being rich toward God and not kind of like that, that guy in the story who just wanted to enjoy life and have a little pleasure and relax and eat, drink, and be merry? I don't know about seeking this kingdom thing. I don't know if I'm doing that. That makes me a little bit nervous. Are you seeking his kingdom? You know, so many comes up to you on the street and says, hey, are you seeking the kingdom of God? What's your answer? What's your evidence? How can you prove that you're seeking the kingdom of God by how you live your life? But then listen to what Jesus says immediately after he says those words. First he says, but seek his kingdom and all these things will be given to you as well. And then he says, do not be afraid, little flock. For your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Okay, this doesn't make any sense to me. You mean I'm supposed to seek the same kingdom which he has already given to me? You mean I'm supposed to seek the same kingdom which he has already given to me as a gift. Yeah, that's what it means. And it's outrageous. This life of a Christian continuing to seek the kingdom that has been given to us as a gift. The parable of the rich fool is an outrageous story. And if you haven't noticed that you either don't fear God or you weren't listening very well. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But let me tell you something that's even more outrageous than this story. God hasn't killed you or me for your greed and selfishness or my greed and selfishness. 
That's outrageous. God hasn't killed you and me for your greed and selfishness or for my greed and selfishness. That's outrageous. You know what's more outrageous? Instead of killing you or killing me, He killed His Son in your place and in my place. You want to talk about outrageous. That people of God is an outrage. And I thank God for the outrage of the gospel every single day of my life that I haven't suffered the punishment that I deserve. But my Father sent His Son to suffer it instead in my place for my greed and my selfishness. That's a Father I can trust in. Happy Father's Day to all of you. In Jesus' name and for His glory. Amen.